Okay, uh, we are going to now talk about the Community Appearance Survey, and we uh, were involved with this also, and there, there's going to be a little redundancy, you might feel, between the housing study that we just presented and the Community Appearance Survey. And, you know, it's one of these situations where as we unfolded the data as it came in, I mean, it was amazing how much alignment there was between the two. Um, the housing survey, as, uh, the housing study that we did uh, combines a variety of uh, market analysis uh, expertise that we do across the country for public and private sector clients. The community appearance survey results are just strictly what people like and don't like. It's what Oklahoma City residents, on a scale of positive five or negative five, reacted to when presented with 124 images. So the fact that we've got this much overlap is a nice alignment and provides a nice platform, hopefully a solid platform, for creating the path forward for the plan. So um, I'm going to step over here. Uh, scope of the study. Um, what we're trying to do with the Community Appearance Survey is inform the of a comprehensive plan. Uh, we also want to create a direct link between use and policy and local design. Um, finally, we want to use images to help inform the plan. Uh, you know, we, as economists, we get buried in data, and halfway through any study, we forget what the initial were at the beginning of the study. But with images, it's really clear um, what people like, what they don't like, and it's hopefully the images will drive a lot of the plan and be very uh, informative to all of us about what the future should hold. Uh, this outline, in terms of what we're talking about today, how did we collect the information is one. Uh, why do demographics matter? I can't help not talk about that. And, uh, what do Oklahoma City residents like? And there are seven different categories. Shopping and dining, office, residential, both single family and multifamily, community character, signs, streets and streetscapes, and parking lots and structures. That was the full broad range of uh, images presented. In terms of the methodology, we had uh, a survey with 124 images. Uh, within those images, there were specific attributes about them with over 100 attributes identified in the image, images. Uh, they were all representative of the Oklahoma City environment. Most were taken from the Oklahoma City context. Uh, it covered all these, these categories, uh, shown there on the, on the screen. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, each respondent ranked each image on a scale of negative five to positive five. And so we have each image has a score associated with it. Uh, there were 241 responses to a mail out survey, plus another 1,300 responses from an open ended link, and a total of 1,600 surveys. A high level of correlation between what we got from the mail in surveys and what we got from the open link. In fact, in terms of statistics, the Pearson correlation was 97%, which is very strong. Uh, so the goal, uh, basically we want to hear what the preferences are of local residents. Uh, and I think this is particularly important. Um, I'm not sure what the composition of the Planning Commission is and the City Council, but I'm sure that both boards want to be sure that what they're hearing and the direction of the plan is grounded in what local residents are saying. And this survey is particularly good at that. So the, um, uh, the next slide, uh, this shows just a breakdown on a set of uh, images 1 through 11. And these are all of the different ways that we collected information, six different subsets of data collection. It shows if you look at image number two and image number four, just an unbelievably high correlation about all respondents for these two images. Others have some variation, but it, they're uh, just to give credibility to the overall methodology, high levels of correlation between the different outreach efforts. Why do demographics matter? I'm going to cover this very quickly. Um, and. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is traditional economic development theory. Uh, this chart right here happens to be one of our clients um, by size of the industry and growth rate. This is a very traditional approach to economic development, and it's not a bad approach. Everyone basically does this. Uh, the idea is to identify where you're good and put a lot of incentives behind them to grow those areas of strength. Once you have that, then housing comes along, uh, the employment opportunities drive the, re uh, the residential demand, and there's a bunch of houses, schools, cul-de-sacs that come up out of the ground. Once you have that, you get retail, because the old adage is, retail follows rooftops. 
That has turned. It's kind of flipped on its head. And there's a new way of looking at things, and, and there's a reset to the approach. What's driving it is that retail seeks activity centers. Retail is being very, very selective today in terms of where they invest their dollars. And they want to be in the activity centers where there's a lot of demand and there's a lot of differentiation uh, compared to what has otherwise become a very commoditized industry. Residents are seeking place. And often, retail, eating and drinking in particular, are part of that place-making element. And once you have residents, then you ultimately get employment because the employment is following the talent. Uh, this is particularly true on a national scale. Oklahoma City is a little insulated in part because it's got some very successful industry that's come up from the community and is very committed to the community. But in general, uh, corporations are following where the talent is. So we have this reversal and Oklahoma City is doing very well in terms of employment and, next slide, very well in terms of attracting talent in this Gen Y cohort. And so there's a lot of really good things going on, but there's a direct link between the quality of spaces that a, a community can achieve and its economic vitality. So moving past that into what do Oklahoma City residents like? We've got some examples here. Uh, this first one is commercial shopping and dining. Uh, we've got a range of alternatives. We have uh, vertical mixed use as well as some single use large format examples here. Uh, Ratings, this lower left has an average rating on a scale of negative five to positive five of 2.2. Uh, the lower right actually has a negative rating of 0.9. Uh, there's differences both in terms of community perception as well as economic performance. When you break these images, uh, the last four images we saw on the first slide happen to be the same images that are on the right side of this slide. And when you look at these images and cross-tabulate them based on uh, age, you can see the age is on the right, so the youngest are 18 to 24, then we have 25 to 34, all the way down to 75 and older. And this is the stair step that I referenced in the earlier presentation. Amazing consistency throughout all of the imagery in terms of what the younger generations are looking for to prefer a staircase with, or down the staircase, depending on how it's, how it's arranged, um, for what the older cohorts are looking for. Um, generally, uh, Strong presence and preference among younger cohorts for this vertical mixed use and streetscapes, and generally strong, stronger preference among older cohorts for the large format, uh, single use, large parking lot development. Commercial development, at the end of the day, what people liked, some images here on the left, pedestrian oriented amenities, uh, parking lots and streetscapes that are safe with attractive pedestrian ways. Just even as you look at the images, to think about where the pedestrian fits within the image is a huge attribute in terms of whether it po has a positive result or a negative result. Uh, and landscaping and street trees are a big differentiator. What people don't like, strip mall development, uh, exposed visible parking lots, and sign clutter. Uh, it's amazing, and I'll talk a little bit about this in the retail uh, findings, but the simplicity and coherence that is available to users along the commercial strip makes a big difference in terms of overall viability of the commercial center and ultimately the amount of sales tax revenue generated by the city. Uh, moving into the residential, we have three examples here. Uh, two single family homes on the upper part, uh, one older, one newer. Uh, both kind of have, have historic uh, overtones to them with the front porch. Uh, and then lower right, uh, single family home, uh, this lower right picture, uh, it's, it was surprising to me to just tour through large areas of Oklahoma City and realize how prevalent this building type on the lower right is throughout the new development. Uh, it's a nice looking house. Um, the scoring uh, is that the upper two images, uh, 60 and 62, are very comparably scored at 2.6 and 2.8. Uh, the lower right is scored at 0.8. Which is interesting because it's a great looking house and there's a lot of this product in Oklahoma City. However, when you really tabulate what people are saying in the survey responses, clearly the homes with the more historic attributes score higher. 
Uh, in terms of multifamily, I thought this was pretty interesting also. Uh, we've got this uh, vertical mixed use on the left, uh, rating of 2.0. Uh, we've got other examples here. A um, couple different things going on this slide. Just lower right shows this uh, breakdown by age cohort, similar to what we've seen on the previous work. Uh, I also think it's interesting because the mid-rise uh, multi-level building is so very high, generally, in the uh, responses. More so than the townhomes. And I think it's interesting, we didn't expect any market. I think the Oklahoma City market is very familiar and prefers single-level living whether it's single family homes or whether it's attached product, the single level living is key. Townhomes are going to have a challenge. Townhomes, duplexes, what have you, with multiple levels, just have that much more of a threshold for buyers to clear, to, to warm up to the product. Uh, residential plan light. Uh, more options uh, for housing, single family have detached or hidden garages, reducing the presence of the automobile in the garage, particularly on the street. Uh, protected sidewalks and providing other pedestrian oriented amenities. Parks, open spaces, uh, the mid-rise multifamily in, in the right locations, smaller setbacks and front porches. Uh, interestingly enough, the, uh, the two-story home here with the front porch scored surprisingly high, even though I'm not sure the two stories, it, it would be limited in the amount of two-story product that would bring on. Nonetheless, it's very visually appealing. What people don't like, uh, we did have some images of uh, older, because clearly that's a big problem. Uh, Front-facing front garages, lack of sidewalks, lack of landscaping. Streets and streetscapes, um, when you can have buffered sidewalks, where you can have amenities with street furniture, uh, lighting, banners, landscaping, what have you, to really create that safe place for pedestrians, very high rankings. Uh, we know that when you've got high traffic volumes, inadequate tree lawns, uh, frequent curb cuts, um, overhead utility lines. I think it's important to realize that some arterials are just going to be high volume, and we need those in any city to get around. However, the frequency of the curb cuts, making the pedestrian feel safe, being able to introduce different types of walking, being able to connect different centers, biowalking, all very important and achievable, reasonably achievable. Signs, what people liked, uh, lower left, you've, we've got a historic sign, and we also have a sign that's integrated to landscaping. Beautiful examples of how to convey signage. On the right, we've got uh, large size signs, we've got um, signs, it's not, they, they kind of aren't part of a larger sign program, and clearly one set got very strong rankings, the other set did not. Community character, uh, we just have a couple more slides. Uh, on community character, people like parks and plazas. Uh, people are looking for places where they can come and connect in the civic realm. Uh, whether it's parks, plazas, farmer markets, and farmer markets in particular, where there's pedestrian connectivity and areas that invite social interaction, those are all very strong. Uh, again, where you have automobile-dominated spaces and isolated buildings, uh, those images ranked much lower. Uh, this, I think, is interesting because we have something that we can all agree on, upper right. So, part of the comp plan just needs to be sprinkled throughout with farmer's markets, apparently. <laughs> Uh, so we, we have something where literally there is a meeting of the minds and, uh, you know, whether it's community gardens, farmers markets, these plazas, what have you, people will coalesce around them and it can be a great introduction to get people to cross paths. The last slide I have is something where it's just important to think about the largest societal trends going on. Uh, this is a slide that I incorporate into my presentations a fair amount, and it's from a book called Bowling Alone. And the premise of the book is that civic um, organizations since 1940 to 2000 have been declining, not the least of which are bowling leagues, and thus the title of the book. But the chart here has church attendance, bowling leagues, and PTA attendance in the red, blue, and purple. And you can see from 1940 to 2000 just this kind of arc and plummet. And then we have uh, the presence of homes with television, and at this point it's television and every other kind of screen you can imagine, and that has escalated from uh, zero up to 100%. So obviously, um, different ways to spend time, different ways to invest in energy, your energy, and a corresponding lack of opportunities to connect in community. I think there's a huge itch that's waiting to be scratched and it's ways that people can participate in the civic realm. 
And I think we're seeing some of that in the data we have today. And to the extent we can have any of these types of uh, places here uh, where you do have more interaction, it will overall benefit the quality of the uh, quality of life in Oklahoma City. 